I'm back. All right. We're going to do a little different now. We're going to go ex- exactly after both attorneys, the, the grievance coordinator, who's a litigation attorney, and the opposing attorney, the attorney for the uh, employer. Key thing we're going to go into, we're going to go into DR4-101. We're going to go based on the fiduciary obligations and can relate to all information obtained in the course of representation. Now, we're going to go to the fact that what the, the sergeant did with a, when she testified that the call occurred at 12 a.m. Yet in her written statement that was submitted for the record, prepared later that night, the sergeant wrote that she placed the call to the respondent at 1145. Now, which one is it? Because that right there is an impropriety. Right there. That's an impropriety. A wrongdoing. And the mere fact that you wrote it up, that's a violation of New York State Penal Law Code 17530, offering instrument for filing on the record with false written statement. Okay? The fact that it's a punishable instrument, that's subsection 21045. Making a punishable instrument, um, a punishable um, um, statement, um, written statement for the record is also a class A misdemeanor. Now, the fact that you, you that you got to understand and said it, that's perjury. That's just perjury right there. But we're going to come down to the employer's um, um, rules and guidelines under the corporate compliance. Fraud means what? An intentional deception of, or mis- misrepresentation may be made by a person with the knowledge and the, decept- and the deception could result in an unauthorized benefit. That's the key. I say now you see right here, she said basically what you see says called him a few minutes later after 12 a.m. Well the officer doesn't come on until 12 a.m. So that was when the captain supposed that call. The officer don't come on until 12 a.m. just like the captain. How are you giving him a directive at 11.45 and then you still didn't send the vehicle? But you did, you wrote him up, right? Yeah, because you could do it as your authority, right? Yeah, so based on your authority, that would be a violation of, you know, Title 18, U.S. Code 242, the de- deprivation of a right under color of law. And you know, under color of law, it's not real law. That means when you breach your contract by your oath of office, when you breach your authority, okay, then you purged yourself. And your lawyer was supposed to break it down right there. With a client purge, client's perjury. Like I said, use what they use against you. Back again.